Hey guys, Joey here. So it is September 23rd and you know what that means. It's getting time to need to start winterizing your RVs and travel trailers and uh, all your boats for that matter. Um, I thought we would do a video real quick on how you could do it if you have the water pump attachment where you can pump the antifreeze through your system. And then I will make another video on how to do it manually in our next video. But for today's customer, um, I've done this trailer for the past five years, so I already have it plumbed so that I can hook it directly up to the water pump, turn a valve, and fill up the system with antifreeze. So let's get started here. So the first thing we want to do is we're going to want to drain the water out of the system. We're going to want to make sure our black tanks are drained, our freshwater tanks are drained, and our gray tanks are drained. Now on this particular trailer, you got a valve. And it's pretty handy to drain the fresh water tank. So we're just going to go ahead and pull it. We want to drain it completely. And then once it's drained, we're going to go ahead and close the valve. So in the past five years, I've winterized this trailer and I have not had a freeze up. Um, it is up on a mountain and it gets rather cold here. They get snow every year. So we're going to go ahead and let that drain. And keep on rolling here. I'm gonna come around to the other side. Now the next thing we're gonna to wanna to do is we're gonna to wanna to make sure that we drain the water heater. Now when I got here today and I opened this one up, there was quite a few wasps inside of it that had built the nest. I knocked it out and I unfortunately did have to get rid of them. There's still some in there crawling around that are alive. I've already loosened our plastic plug for the particular water heater. Um, I don't have it loose enough. Let's go ahead and just use the channel locks. I got them handy here. So, go ahead and loosen that some more. If you guys remember, I did a video on replacing your plugs a while back. So, we want to make sure we do that too when they get all tore up right here on the water heater. But I'm by myself today. Hope the video's good enough that it helps somebody winterize on their own where they don't have the option of bringing in a professional. I apologize if it's not great. So we got a little bit of water pressure going on here. Okay. Now we have the cap off. And while the TPT valve is closed, if you watch when I open it, the water to flow out as fast as possible and it helps get rid of some of that debris that's down in the bottom of the tank. Now that doesn't mean you shouldn't still clean out your tanks when you're all done. Um, the following winter I like to wash them out and flush them, get rid of all the debris that's inside of them. Um, this particular water heater does not have an anode rod. If you have a suburban water heater you would have an anode rod in it and it would be a lot different than the plastic one, but it is the same concept as far as removing it and then opening that TPT valve to get it to go ahead and drain. Now, if we don't drain the water heater when winterizing the travel trailer, or the RV for that matter, one thing that happens is, is a lot of RV water heaters have aluminum tanks on it. The suburban ones have steel tanks, but Atwood models have aluminum. And the water inside expands and it actually cracks the water heater tank itself and some water heater tanks are replaceable but a lot of RV technicians don't have the proper tools to replace the tanks on them and so they will sell you an entire new water heater. Um, that's very unfortunate because they're not cheap but then again even a tank is not cheap so we always want to make sure we drain the water out of our RV water heater when we're winterizing our RV. So now that's still draining. We're going to go ahead and leave that plug off. We're going to leave the TPT valve open for now. We're going to go inside for our next step and we're going to find where the bypass is on the RV water heater. Now on this particular travel trailer, it's a mallard in case anybody is curious if you have a mallard. Um, doesn't mean it's going to be in the same location, but it is below the oven. So go ahead and remove it here and you're gonna have three valves, okay? And this is how you bypass the system 
for the water the RV water heater because we do not want to add um, antifreeze to the water heater if you do it's very difficult to get out it takes a lot of time it's very time consuming so what you're gonna do is on the hotline which is gonna be up top here on this model we're gonna turn that off and then on the cold line we're gonna turn that one off and as you can see they're straight up and down because they're closed so now the line here which is the actual bypass it's still closed if you don't open this it won't allow the water to bypass through the system so it's going to come in here and it's just going to go right back around instead of going in the water heater and then so it goes in the water heater here and comes out the water heater through the hot side typically when it's not in bypass mode but you bypass it it skips these two lines blocks them off so no water can go in or out and you have an empty water heater so now that we have the water heater bypass one of the things i like to do is clean you know, up i give the faucets here a quick pop open this one is very simple to do so i'm doing this like as best as i can to explain to you guys and through the video camera i'm sorry if it's not the best quality the goal of my videos as everybody already knows that watches them is to just help you guys out so i've got Ar arctic band minus 50 degrees rv marine antifreeze you want to make sure it's rv marine antifreeze don't buy it if it's not okay i bought this at our local hardware store you can buy it online i'll post links down below in the video so what we have inside here is our water pump. I don't know if I can get a light on here for you guys. I don't think it's working. But it has this bypass hose, which I have already installed right here. And you can see there's still a little bit of antifreeze in it from the last time that it was done. But all I have to do is take this clear plastic hose that I have here. Turn this light off. We're gonna take the lid, pop a hole in it. We're gonna take our hose and plumb it right into the gallon of RV marine antifreeze. So we go back inside here, turn the light on for you guys. See this little valve right there? We're gonna open that. Did you see how the antifreeze disappeared in the line? because it this valve is now opened so when I turn on the water pump it's going to draw the RV antifreeze instead of water from the fresh water tank and we already drained our fresh water tank so now we're gonna come over here you want to make sure all your valves are shut off and turn that light back off guys sorry about that and we got our water pump right there but let's double check Make sure this everything's off. Check the shower. Off, off. Okay. So we're gonna go ahead and turn our water pump on. See it's drawn antifreeze from the gallon already. We're gonna come over here, move our bowl. And we're going to run cold water until we see pink. The water pump is very loud on this one. Alright, we got pink coming out of the cold side there. And we've used about 25% of our gallon of antifreeze. So, we're going to go ahead and do the hot side here. So we're going to run it so we see pink. All right, we got pink. Now we've used about 50% of our antifreeze. Now your RV may be bigger, so it may be different. So you want to make sure you buy enough antifreeze. I always buy three to four gallons. just depends on what I'm doing. I mean, realistically, I buy it by the pallet. But go ahead and run the bathroom sink. 
Now we see pink. We got pink. We're gonna run the hot side. We're gonna do this on the toilet, the shower, and everything else. We'll make sure we have we still got enough the there. Okay. Cold. We got about 25% left here. So we're gonna go ahead. Run. There we go. Okay. And me personally, I always take the shower heads off. You can do whatever you feel is necessary. Well, we'll go into the bathroom here. I can't find a light for you guys. Try to make it a little brighter. And we're going to run the toilet until we see pink as well. All right, we got pink. All right, so. There is an exterior shower on most RVs and travel trailers. So you can hear our pump. It's no longer in the antifreeze here. We'll go ahead and open this other one. So you'll definitely want to make sure you run your exterior shower as well. Any faucets you might have the goal. Okay. Look here, I'm gonna shut this light off. So what I'm doing now is I'm just running some extra antifreeze into the P-traps of the systems. I have a little left over here. So I like to pour antifreeze in all of the P-traps, the shower, every, every sink, the toilet. Well, I mean, if you don't, I mean, they do, they do hold water. So you know how they have that little U-shape in them. So I'll go ahead and just pour the rest of it into the toilet here. So, and then when I'm all done, I actually flush that down and I put whatever's left over in the gray tank and the uh, black tank. So, this unit, all I have left to do is do the exterior shower and then this unit is done being winterized. The kit for the water pump to be able to hook up your system like this is relatively cheap and very easy to install for the do-it-yourself or type. Um, Anybody that's interested in that, I will post a link below for you guys. But as you can see, this video took about 13 minutes. I probably took about 10 minutes prep time before I started making the video. And you know, it's fairly simple stuff as long as you follow instructions and you just wanna make sure you get all the faucets on your RV. So if you have an exterior shower, I can't stress enough that you should do that. And go ahead and feel free to take the, the the shower nozzle off the exterior shower because that will help you guarantee that come into next summer you're not going to have to buy another exterior shower nozzle head or shower head for that matter. Sorry guys. <laughs> but anyways you guys I hope you enjoyed the video. I know it's not the best video but the goal of my videos like I said is to tr just to try to people understand what really goes on when winterizing their RV and you may want to do it yourself. So that's wonderful. Um, I, I do enjoy going out and winterizing people's RVs. I get to do several every year because I have repeat customers and it helps keep me in business. But at the same time, I realize not everybody has the luxury of hiring an RV technician to come out and do their work. Whether it be money is tight or they just don't have a local RV, mobile RV repair man or a local RV repair shop and they have to drive several miles into town. So one thing I like to do um, is when I'm all done on the water heater, I do leave the plug off, but I do close the freshwater tank when it's done draining. So we'll go ahead and do that and we'll end the video there. And if you guys have any questions, please feel free to ask. 
I will make another detailed video on how to do this if you are not plumbed to be direct from the water pump to the antifreeze, how to manually pump it into your system. And I will also show you how to do it without using antifreeze at all. So I'll have those videos posted within the next week here and we'll get this one up for you guys. If you enjoyed the video or it helped you in any way at all, please feel free to subscribe and share it with your friends that might have RVs. Maybe it can help them out too, help save some money. And I just want to thank everybody that's already subscribed. And until next time, this is Joey and safe travels, guys.